Hey, welcome back. Today on my bench I have an old favorite of mine. This is my HK503. I've owned this thing probably since the 70s and um, I've always loved this amplifier. It sounds great. I've always loved the Phono um, equalization amplifier in it and I've used that mainly for a lot of um, when I was dubbing vinyl to uh, mp3s I was using this amplifier itself because it sounds so good um, but it suffers slightly I hooked it up and plugged it in the other day to try it out and I couldn't even listen to it for the day because it just sounds like ass um, it's just terrible um, things going on with this thing um, got dirty switches pots are dirty obviously function switch is dirty and uh, I don't think the ball volume is too scratchy but I can't remember but it sounded so bad I just had to disconnect it and listen to something else so uh, probably what I'm going to do is it needs a good cleaning it's filthy I don't know why I understand why it's so filthy I think I lent it to somebody and they brought it back like this it's got like fingerprints all over it and it's just disgusting. Um, a lot of dust, a lot of dust on the knobs, huge amount of dust. So ultrasonically clean those. Um, basically what I want to do is a full recap on this and probably upgrade the uh, power supply capacitors and do a nice cleanup and get this thing sounding good again because it deserves to be used. It's, it shouldn't be sitting any longer. Um, the interesting thing about this 503 I couldn't ever figure out is why they have rotating knobs for some switches, push buttons for other switches, here's another rotating knob for this loudness, and then here they have levers for the tape monitors. I couldn't figure out why they used all these different switches, push buttons, levers, it just didn't make sense to me. It seems like it was a uh, maybe it was cobbled together in a hurry. I don't know, but the circuitry in this is pretty good. It's, uh, it calls itself DC coupled ultra wide band integrated amp, and um, it does have good frequency response. And it, as far as DC coupled goes, well, aren't they all? But uh, let's pull the lid off and have a look inside. So. Judging from the dust in this thing, I don't think it's ever been opened. I don't ever remember opening this myself and looking inside. Probably the lid came off. But uh, the dust on the bottom here is pretty thick. I'm going to have to get the old compressor out and blow out all the gremlins here. There's a lot of... I'm looking around, there's a lot of circuit glue here on some of these circuits. It might be the cause of the, the terrible sound. We could have some shorts and there's some areas here that are a little roasted by the heat. And I'm not seeing cracks yet but there might be. I have to get my eyeglass out and have a look. main thing is I want to do a restoration just to bring this back because uh, these are quite desirable amplifiers with the dust in this thing. It's just filthy. I'm gonna go blow it out. But uh, overall there's nothing wrong with it. I don't see anything going on. You know it does work even though it doesn't sound good. Both channels, you know, it's every time you listen to a song on this it's a new experience because either one channel cuts out or one channel turns to distortion and goes on a low volume. Um, yeah, so there's going to be a lot of cleaning on this. So I think the first step is just take it outside and blow the dust out. Okay, I've gone through and I recapped the amplifier. Um, I haven't checked any of the caps yet, so I don't know to what extent the uh, how bad they are. But I expect I didn't find too many bad ones. I think there was a couple, but not you know the majority but it's got a full recap um, the two or sorry four my, the four uh, power supply filter caps these 4750 volts 
Um, these tested good. But what I did is I opted to upgrade them to a, uh, from a 4700 microfarad to a 10,000 microfarad. And I put brand new 10,000 microfarads in just to give it that extra kick. Um, I know it wasn't necessary, the parts weren't bad, but I did it anyways. This is my amp, so I'm going to do what I want with it. And uh, I thought, you know, I'd treat myself and give myself some extra kick there. Not finding any problems with the amp itself. I did find one crack solder joint on one of the driver transistors. I think it was one of these here. Down here. But uh, I'd soldered that up, and but I haven't found any other ones. And just going through, I just did the recap, like I said. And now I'm going on to pots and switches. I cleaned the, some of the pots already, and now I'm working on these switches. I just removed this. And I'm going to do a good clean on these switches because they can get very noisy. I don't think they're bad enough to be, be replaced yet. But I think um, they'll benefit from... Um, you know, good cleaning. So I'll put it all back together and then next steps I guess is the um, setting up the bias and DC offset and then we're gonna do some test driving. Hopefully this thing sounds better than it did because it sounded bad before. I was just looking at these uh, end caps and uh, let's see here. This one's not bad of shape at all. It's uh, clean it up and have a good look at it. This one's fairly good. The bottom is not finished, but the top is. And sometimes you get scratches along the top or the front face. But this one's got one scratch here. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. Let's see if we can get that. If you can see that scratch there. But the rest of it is pretty good. This one, on the other hand, is pretty rough shape. I don't even see the scratches in this one. We've got scratches here and here. And back up, maybe I'm too close. And the other side is really bad. You can see it's badly scratched here. These can be cleaned up with sandpaper, but you want to be careful. You don't want to work the sandpaper too much in one spot because you'll make a, a divot, right? You want to use your sandpaper over the entire surface to make a, a clean, flat surface. Um, if you have an emery cloth you can put it down on a piece of glass and then you can lay this down and then you can sand it but you always want to sand with the direction of the grain here um, the goal is to get rid of these um, these scratches that are not oh, you can see those scratches it's hard to see in the camera a bit but you, these can clean up these can clean up pretty good and then you take a scouring pad after the sandpaper and you give it a nice buff and uh, this will give it a nice finish because these aren't coated in any way they're just raw aluminum just chunks of aluminum see I got a nice dent here in the top too I might be able to get that out I won't be able to get the dent out but I can be able to clean up the uh, the burrs that it made you can see that there's a dent right there, right, right near the, the bottom. But uh, yeah, we can clean this up, make it look like new again. Let's have a look at the schematic for this amplifier. Okay, we got power supply, single winding transformer, and we have a winding, secondary winding that's not being used. It's probably a carryover from another model. Two six and a quarter amp fuses on each leg, and then we run it into two independent bridge diodes, diode bridges. Got one here, one here, and each uh, diode bridge has its own set of capacitors, which are 4,750 volts. And uh, remember, we upgraded these to 10,000 at 50 volts, all four of these. So from there, we drive our B plus B2 minus B2 and uh, plus B1 minus B1. So those are our, our main power supplies for the amplifiers. Here we have 
uh, little circuit and I think what this circuit does is it is the soft start for the amplifier it uh, provides a little bit of a delay turn on delay when this becomes energized let's see how does this work yeah I think when this capacitor charges this transistor turns on and uh, through these two steering diodes it goes up over to uh, the two power amplifiers here's one right channel left channel and um, you have your long tail pair here this is your first input stage for the, um, the amplifier you got your signal coming in here you have your negative feedback coming from this side and between the two they differentiate and figure out uh, what the signal is to carry forward and this turn on signal this soft start uh, turns this transistor this one here and here turns them on and off and uh, when they're turned off there's going to be no current flowing through this long tail pair and when the three seconds or four seconds whatever times out and this comes on and then this transistor turns on this transistor turns on and then the app comes alive and then signal can start being fed through um, let's look at the in phono input we have all our inputs on the left here um, phono tuner auxiliary then your two tape loops phono goes directly through a 33 microfarad 6.3 volt blocking cap into the amplifier and through this amplifier we have our right here I think in the feedback loop is your RIAA equalization and then on the output of the phono amp you have a 4.7 uh, microfarad at 25 volt and, and then it's carried through a 1k resistor and then it goes into your function switching function switching phono tuner auxiliary that carries from the back panel over to the switch and selects the one of the three and then from there it goes directly into your tape monitor switching tape copy after that it goes into what appears to be from your switching it goes through a 1k resistor um, stereo mono switch you have your uh, volume pot right here first thing up second thing up is your balance pot and then we have another 10 microfarad 6.3 volt blocking capacitor here at the input stage of the preamplifier so you know we're getting all these blocking capacitors put in the fronts and the backs of these amplifiers uh, DC coupled I don't know what that means to me but uh, I, I sure don't see it here on the output of this preamplifier we have a hundred microfarad capacitor again and then we go into tone defeat switching this is this whole section here is your tone section you got your high cut subsonic and your buffer amps these takes care of everything with regards to the, the tone control and then from there it goes straight into the power amplifiers through this 100 microfarad at 10 volt capacitor again another capacitor blocking um, the power amplifier itself is is all DC coupled of course it is because most amplifiers are so if we go here and look at this part that is our input section and what that does is it takes the signal and it takes the negative feedback and between the two of them it derives a signal that is carried forward to this section here this is called the voltage amplifier section this section takes care of all the amplification and gain or majority of it some gain is happening on some gain is happening in this stage but this majority of the gain is happening here and what this does is it boosts the signal to the voltage that we want whether it's uh, 20 volts or 30 volts RMS whatever that voltage is that's where it gets boosted here this stage is the output stage and its purpose is just current gain that's all it does is it, it, it uh, amplifies the current the voltage stays pretty much the same or even actually it loses a bit of gain um, 
but uh, this is where all the current amplification happens and then we have the output. Um, speaker protection, well we have two circuit breakers and these are two and a half amp circuit breakers. Uh, they're not resettable. You have to set, reset them manually and then it goes through speaker switching and headphones and output. So pretty much all there is to it. Um, their claims of DC coupled, I don't know. It's, this looks like every other amplifier I've seen. So it has a nice regulation stage here for the preamp. We have regulated plus and minus voltages. Uh, plus B4 and minus B4. And I believe this is, well yeah, this Zener is 15 here. 15 volts, so. Plus B3 is, let's see what plus B3 is. Uh, I'll go up to the voltages here. Yeah, plus B3 and minus B, Plus B3, minus B3 is 18, and uh, minus B4 is 14.5. 14.5, those are regulated, these two. One of the things I don't like about the 503, and I guess the 505 as well, and the receivers, there's a 470, 560, or whatever they are called, they have this uh, really thin aluminum fascia plate, and it it dents easy. See here, I got dents all over. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, and it's it. That's what I don't like about these amplifiers. They look good. They have the uh, the aluminum extrusions on the front and sides, top and sides, but the front is. Uh, I think they went a little cheap on that, and uh, it doesn't stand up as well as the the full extruded fronts so that's just me complaining probably a lot of you already know this but if you have a knob that doesn't want to stay on like it's loose on the shaft you just take a little screwdriver and spread the um, just spread it a little bit not much you get very careful because it's aluminum and it'll snap but then you once you spread it it uh, gives it a nice tight fit and they're hard to pull off. All right, so let's get on to alignment of the amplifier. I got everything reassembled and I got it hooked up to the left channel speaker output uh, terminal. I think up in the corner you can see the voltmeter. And when I first turned it on, it was around 220 millivolts. Now it's dropped, it's starting to settle around 125. Um, yeah, it's pretty much settled at 125 right now. So the spec for this is zero. So let's go in and tweak this so we can get zero. And we are 402. In here. So let's turn this. Which way do we need to turn it? Okay, we're going down. Take it down to zero. That's quite a ways. Let's see here. I I think. Uh, let's see here. Let's get this figured out first. Where are we? I think I sh overshot zero. Where right, I go back. There's one there. Okay, I think the reason why this amplifier sounded so lousy was because the the bias was was not set, and uh, the DC out was not set either. The DC balance on the outputs. So what are we down to now? We're down to two millivolts. Okay, so let's let that settle, and we'll do the other channel while we're waiting. Connect this up to the other channel. And what do we got here? 39. Okay. Uh, 
And we need to adjust 401. 401 is down here, I believe. And it looks like it's really out. And I think I got it. Turn this down. Let's see. Turn it down, turn it up. Turning it up kind of clockwise and it's going towards zero. There we go. It wants to climb back up again, so let's give it a little bit more. Right there. The spec for this is plus or minus 60 millivolts, which is a wide range. Uh, plus or minus 60 millivolts. And then we'll get this, I'll go back and I'll check. It's floating around zero. Or is it climbing? It's like it's climbing. Nothing's warm. I wish I had a backlit voltmeter. It would be a lot nicer. Be easier to see too. Okay, if I can get this down. Wow, it's really going crazy now. Okay, we got a one millivolt on the right channel. Let's go back and check the left again. Left is down around seven, so it climbed back up. Let's get it close as we can before we go on to the bias adjustment. Right there, I think. Okay, we got both of those tweaked in, in finally. 
Uh, let's go on to the DC bias adjustments. Okay, we're back. I had to tack a few wires onto the amplifier here to do my bias settings. The bias is taken across both resistors. This is uh, resistor 1, resistor 2, and they're in series. And this one goes to the emitter of one transistor, this one goes to the emitter of the other. So they're measuring across both transistors instead of one, which is kind of unusual. But hey, it doesn't really matter because all we're doing is we're measuring the current through that leg of uh, the circuit. Now, I've had this thing on for about 10 minutes now, idling. And you can see up on the meter there, I got a high bias, around 47 millivolts. So let's tweak this down. It's the, the spec is supposed to be 13, or sorry, 33 plus or minus 1.6 millivolts. Okay. So let's get this without shorting anything out and blowing things up. Let's move this around so I can reach the pots. And this time I'm going to adjust, can't even read the, it's covered with a 403, doesn't say what channel it is, 403 and 404, but it doesn't really matter anyway because I have this channel first. Okay, so let's go down. Taking it the wrong way. Let's go the other way. Okay, I'm going to take it a little bit low because I have a feeling it's going to creep up again. No, it's creeping down. Okay, well, let's do the other channel while that settles. Take this off. They have no provision for uh, test test leads or anything, so I had to solder a couple little wires onto the board. This one's a little better. This one's at 36 millivolts. So let's turn this one down. If I can find the pot. there. I'll let that settle for about another 10 minutes and then we'll come back and check it. Okay so it's been about another 10 minutes and I can see that channel that I'm measuring now is settled in properly and it's at 33 millivolts. Let's check the other one quickly and then we'll get onto a power test here and uh, get this wrapped up. Other channel 32.3 is pretty close I'm not going to touch that so what I'm going to do now, shut this down, remove those two jumpers I soldered on, and then we'll set it up for a power test. Okay, so we got we've got our amp hooked up, and we got speakers on system two, which I'm on right now. I just want to run this through some tests here. Frequency, let's turn this down. Thirty hertz or so. Balance. Treble's not scratchy. Base pot. Looks good. Subsonic. It doesn't seem to have much effect on thirty hertz. I think if I take it down. Sorry, that was forty hertz. Starting to get a little bit of effect there, 20 hertz. Quite a bit. I expect it'll get uh, more attenuation as it goes down. Mono, loudness. Okay, let's go. Let's go on the high end. Balance is good. Treble is good. 
high cut. Oh, it's tone defeat, high cut. Everything's working. Okay, so let's engage the dummy load and let's get a camera on the scope so we can see what we're doing. So I got camera on the scope. You're going to see some glare on the screen. It's from my LEDs I put in my lighting. Let's turn this up. We're at uh, 8 kilohertz right now. Let's turn this up. Is our clipping? Twenty one point six volts RMS at eight ohms. Let's uh, change this to 20 kilohertz. Why did it change so much? Twenty kilohertz. Not seeing any distortion other than clipping. 21 volts RMS is good. Let's check the high cut. So the high cut does at 20 kilohertz. Pretty much removes our signal. Okay. Trouble. Good. Let's go down to we're at sixty hertz now. Nice clean wave at 60 hertz, subsonic. Doesn't have much effect at 60 hertz. Let's turn it down to 20. Subsonic cuts out quite a bit. Let's take it down to 12 hertz. Starting to get some distortion at 12 hertz. And check a 5 hertz. Subsonic should really make a big difference here. Yeah, it takes it right out. So from what I can see, the amp's working great. The real test will be my ears. So let's uh, wrap this up and uh, give it a test drive. So that much pretty much wraps it up. Um, just a few more things I wanted to mention. Um, this amp at idle, just idling, uh, sitting on, consumes 28 29 watts from the power outlet, which is about right. If uh, you you have a watt meter and you're able to measure it, you can uh, tell if the amplifier is out of balance. If it's you're getting 35, 40 watts, um, it's you're consuming way too much current, and the amplifier needs to be adjusted. That's a good it's a good indication. 
it's not it's not the end all, but uh, gives you an idea. I have a I have a Harman Kardon uh, HK 460 that's ready to come on the bench here pretty soon when I have the time. I measured the current consumption or the the wattage consumption at idle, and it's consuming 40 about 45 watts, and it gets pretty hot. You can feel it; it's hot. And this is just barely warm here now. Um, just a word on that. This amplifier has positive negative rails of 40 volts, which means over the span of the, from the positive to negative is an 80 volts um, potential difference. And uh, when I when I set up the bias, I, I measured across both emitter resistors, and if I total up the um, the ohms on the on the emitter resistors, it's 0.44 ohms, and I set the idling current at 33 millivolts, I believe, yeah. So that sets up the amplifier for an idling current of about 75 milliamps, you know. That's that's about what the manufacturer wanted, 75 milliamps of idle current going through the output transistors. Um, which, you know, 80 watts, or sorry, 80 volts at 75 milliamps, you're going to be looking at about 6 watts of, of, of power dissipated just by the amplifier idling and that's not counting the the pre-driver stage or the stages before that which there'll be some heat there as well but uh, if you figure six watts for one channel six watts for the other channel it should dissipate 12 watts of heat just out of the output transistors when it's all set up normal um, other things about this amp well it's an old amp it's you know it's it's late 70s and the adhesive is drying up on these knobs. This is pretty typical for all Harman Kardons. You see the adhesive dries up and it just lets go. So I usually give these a tug to make sure they're not loose. And if they're not loose, I leave them alone. If they're loose, if they spin or anything like that, I um, what I do is I just pull it apart and give it a shot of hot glue. It doesn't take much. I just give it a little shot of hot glue in the, in the inside lid. And uh, if you have a spot where it's bad on the knob, you could put that down. These ones, it doesn't matter. And just press it together. Because the pointer is on the plastic, so it doesn't... Uh... There we go. That one's good. They're all good. Um... Other than that, I think we're done. I'm going to put this uh, through the ultimate test. My test is I put it on my desk and I use it for listening to minute music. I have a set of speakers that I use for all audio testing. And uh, I know how those speakers should sound. And I, it's quite noticeable when you hook up different amplifiers, the, the different sound uh, quality you get out of the, out of the, out of the, the music. But um, you, can tell, you can tell a high grade amplifier because it it sets up the sound and it's there and you can you can tell but uh, when you get an amplifier that sounds like crap and uh, it sounds like mud you just want to turn it down you don't want to really want to turn it up anymore but that's the ultimate test so I'm going to put this on my my desk and test it out and see how, how it sounds now that I've gone through and recapped it and gave an alignment all right so I think that's it for this um, I got more lots more coming up um, I got a few items I want to get cleared off my bench before I continue on, but uh, um, that's it for this one. All right, so thanks for watching.